chance to talk to you post Washington State. Just your thoughts overall on the series win? Um, it was a great series win uh, to start with. I was really uh, excited to get on the road with the team. You know, um, we lost that opportunity to the weather earlier with the Santa Barbara series being here. And you just forget how important it is to come together as a team and what road trips do for you. Um, and there were some things that happened on the, the road trip that really uh, helped our ball club. And so from a cultural standpoint, uh, it was exciting to get on the road and have the results we had. You just missed the, the battle you guys showed and mounting a couple comebacks that way? Um, yeah, that was you know the result of probably some of the things that happened behind the scenes and stuff, which is great. Um, but to see the bats uh, catch fire and some of the other good things that happened, I mean, it was it was a really good trip. One of those other good things was Matt Dallas, who wins Pac-12 Pitcher of the Week. Just your thoughts on his performance specifically on Sunday and how that kept you guys in the game. Well, made a Sports Center play too. Um, you know, on on a ball that was hit back at him. Um, just a tremendous leader. You know, I had a good week overall. He won two games. We won two games. You know, he. he uh, um, and so for him to, to win the Pac-12 Pitcher of the Week last week, that's huge. It's huge for our young guys, too, to be able to see um, an older guy lead the way he's been leading um, and pounding the, the, the strike zone and, and doing it with his, you know, commitment, I guess. It's not just on the field. I mean, his commitment off the field towards improving his game and leading has been tremendous, and I'm happy he was rewarded. I think you used to see an award like that go to somebody who had, like, one great start, something like that. Yeah. To see a guy recognized for a contribution like that, I think is a little more rare. Does that make it more special maybe and just yeah. nice to see him get that acknowledgement? Probably harder for a reliever to get it. Just uh, overall, you know, the number of innings pitched and stuff like that usually comes into a factor. Um, and still yet, you know, I, I believe me, I would love to see a, a starter get that award this year too. That would be fun. And so let's knock on wood, have that hub happen here who soon. Who makes that decision? Is it uh, you guys send in nominees or who, who looks and finds Yeah, we, we send in nominees internally. And so our yeah. best pitcher and our best position player will nominate every week. And we've had a couple of kids nominated, uh, you know, uh, week by week. And this is, I think, one of the or the first time that we've had a pitcher win that this year. What did you see from Carter Garotti this weekend, getting three starts and hitting his first home run? Intensity. Uh, didn't back down. Uh, I thought he played good. I didn't think he played great, as good as I know he'll be. Um, I thought he swung the bat with intent, um, and I don't think he probably would tell you that he hit great or played defense great, but I tell you what he did do was he, he brought energy and he brought a conviction with him that was just tremendous, and people fed off of it, even uh, though he's young and he's a freshman. Um, he just, his, his uh, competitiveness is unique and uh, reminds me of a shortstop I had at Arizona, Alex Mejia, um, and the two of them are very, very similar when it comes to things, and, and if Carter can learn some of the things that Alex learned in his career, uh, wow, he could be a real, really tremendous shortstop, and he has that potential for sure. With Karate at shortstop and Grant at second base, just what does that do for your infield defense? Is that Time will tell. The idea is uh, for it to settle down. You know, you've got 10 freshman pitchers, and what you need is outs to be outs. Um, and, and um, you know, those are things that we can control, hopefully, um, by just personnel moves. And so that's the intent of that move. If those lineup changes, Owen D. Dotty didn't get in a bat this weekend. Was that a, a tough decision to kind of leave him out? I know obviously you struggled. Well, I mean, it's always a tough decision when you, you, you aren't playing somebody, but they pretty much, um, you know, he hasn't, he hasn't gotten off to the start that he's wanted. He's had a lot of opportunities. And, you know, at this point in time, you know, we're, we're in the Pac-12 play now. It, it's no longer let's experiment. It's, you know, let's settle in on things that we need to settle in on. I wouldn't write him off, that's for sure. I wouldn't write anybody off. Um, but at the same point in time, you know, there is a production level that needs to occur and, and, um, and an expectation. Stepping back from conference play this weekend, what are priorities? What do you want to see from your club? What, do you, what are the big things to get out of this weekend? Uh, compete, win, uh, have the priority on the team, um, not individual. And that's an interesting concept when you've got one individual who's chasing a record and an individual record. And so how do you balance that, coach, you know, kind of stuff. But, you know, it's not about the individual. It's, a, it's about the team. It's a team game. We don't play golf. Uh, and I don't know, maybe golf's a team game too, but uh, in some aspects, but it's more individualistic, I guess. And, um, you know, for me, it's, it's strictly about the team. I thought the team came together. 
this weekend. I thought they cared more about um, maybe somebody else on the ball club and how can I um, improve somebody else's day and not, not just mine. And for me, I think those are the things that, that we're going to be looking for this weekend to improve upon and continue to improve like we did this last weekend. So hearing from you that as Tanner's setting records, you're going to be happy for him, but the big picture is team goals, team priorities, things like that. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Just to segue on that, though, what does make him special? What you've seen since you've been here, what what has enabled him to to do that? Uh, the different characteristics at the plate, especially at the plate. You're talking about Tanner. Tanner, yeah. Well, I mean, first and foremost, in order to to get a lot of hits, you got to be in the lineup a lot, you know. And so he's been in the lineup a lot for his career, and so the credit to him to be able to earn earn a spot and produce at a level where he stays in the lineup. You know, no coach wants to. Uh, or has a contract, at least we certainly don't have a contract with people that we have to play somebody or whatever. We're going to play people that are going to help us win ball games. And I think Tanner, um, with what he's done here in his career, is, has been a guy that's been productive and consistent enough to maintain himself in the lineup the entire time. His work ethic is tremendous. During this offseason, he's committed himself to the weight room at a level that he never has. Um, and... You know, those are those are some intangibles that clearly help when it comes to you know having a young ball club and and having an older guy walk, walking around the weight room and if the lift is an hour long lift, he's not a guy that's leaving after 45 minutes. He's probably a guy that's trying to find another weight to lift an hour and 15 or an hour thir- hour and 30 in to be able to develop this game and he's uh, turned into that kind of guy and that kind of leader. You consider him a contact hitter. He does have power too. But I mean, how would you describe him? Is there any player? Like you mentioned, the Arizona player uh, that he reminds you of, that Tanner reminds you of? No, he's unique in his own way. He's, he, he plays best when he's just, uh, you know, working for what he's up for right now, and that's the hit deal. You know, when he's just striving to get hits, I think you see power show up. When he's striving for power, you see his hits disappear. And so for him, his key to success is just – um, you know, having a relaxed body, letting his hands work to where he can be more hitterish than than a guy that's a slug machine and a, let's drive the ball out of the park kind of guy. Even though he's got the power to do it, that's not where he works his best. Riku also got three starts in right field this week, and I think it was Saturday he had a nice relay. Now that you've seen him out there in right field more, uh, what did you see from him defensively? Well, he was solid defensively, and he can really run and go get the ball. The re- relay you're referring to was a huge momentum play. He hit Grant right in the chest on a ball that was, you know, in the corner, and so we were able to execute a, a relay in and out at the plate with those two, uh, with you know, those two throws from Riku to Gavin and Gavin to the catcher. So it was a huge play. Riku's a really good player, um, you know, and he's a catalyst offensively. And so I'd like to keep the speed in the lineup. He produces a lot of contact, and we've got a team that has probably more power-type guys, and Riku's unique to the lineup, and so that um, that's something I'd like to see him continue um, and even develop even more uh, as being the best contact hitter in the league. Last week, we talked a lot about the lineup changes. It's looking for something to click. Saturday and Sunday, you have basically the same lineup other than Bennett Thompson starting on Saturday and Comic right. on Sunday. Is that a lineup that you feel like can click after it scored 12 unanswered and double digits in both games? Well, yes and no. I mean, we're going to need the defense to be cinched up, you know. And so the defense is the first priority for me because nothing nothing works without pitching working. And the, in order for pitching to work, then you've got to have a defense that's working. And, and so the defense is first and foremost for me. Uh, last weekend, you know, I think it was two weeks ago, I was embarrassed with our catching play. Last weekend, our, both of our catchers were tremendous. Um, one of them was even nominated for a Pac-12 Player of the Week. That's how good Josiah caught last week. Bennett Thompson caught just the same. He, caught, he was exceptional behind the dish. And so that loose end going into last weekend, they answered the, the call. Uh, I want to see him continue to answer that call and, and the rest of the field. I mean, when you got a young pitching staff, they're going to have their ups and downs with, with stuff. But the thing that we can't do is we can't uh, allow those young guys to lose their confidence because when they get an out, we don't convert the out in the field form. We need to make sure that those outs are outs. And so regardless of who's a better hitter and all that kind of stuff, that's nice. But I want the best defenders out on the field uh, to where we can settle the pitchers down the best we possibly can. What do you make of Matthew Grabman's performance so far? He's, he's been great at limiting hits, but obviously he's issued a lot of walks. Um, well, I mean, he's a freshman, and he's got a tremendous arm, and he's learning how to do it. Uh, the thing that I was most impressed with last weekend was is he just got after guys. He came in in a really tough spot. 
you know, we didn't get a good start and Matthew came in and he had the determination and the fire that you were looking for that maybe Matt Dallas and some of the other guys that have been really good at that uh, through the years um, have done. And he did that. He came in and uh, the mentality for him to come in there as a freshman and, and throw the ball the way he did has been really impressive. Sure, he's had some things that he wants to improve upon, but, you know, I can live with I can live with mistakes as long as they're made uh, out of the right mindset. It's it's the things that I see that look timid, look bashful. Um, those are the things that I'm not going to accept. And so if I see a guy getting after it and making a mistake, I'm going to have grace for him because of their youth. But if I see a guy that's dancing around the strike zone and being timid and this, that, and the other, uh, that, that's just not acceptable. That's not what we're about. People don't want to see that, and we're not going to stand for that. Did you see some timidness this weekend then from your starters? Because, again, this is a lot of another weekend where there's a lot of walks, a lot of free passes. Just Was that, a, was that an issue, do you thought, the timidness of them or no? Um, yes and no. Um, you know, for me, you know, when you give up hits, that's one thing. And I'd actually encourage them to give up more hits. You know, uh, that's something that I think our opponent's batting average against right now against us is very, very good. Um, you know, for the Ducks, I mean, shoot, when you got an opponent's batting average less than 200 or less than 220 um, for opposing teams, uh, shoot, throw the ball over the plate and let's go. Well, they're trying to throw the ball over the plate, and the guys that um, that uh, are just dancing around the zone and a little bit bashful about really filling up the zone and maybe even giving up more hits, I could care less about that. Uh, but the things when you see a guy dance around the zone and not throwing the ball over the plate because he's pitching timid, uh, that's not going to be accepted. And how about Jackson Pace uh, specifically? Because his first two starts were so good, but then he's, he's really struggled in the last two. So what do you make of that? Jackson's got a big future. He's got, you know, when he's right, you know, he's got a really heavy fastball that can sit in the low 90s. And, you know, when he's getting after it and he's throwing, he's throwing in the low 90s with his stuff, he's really hard to hit. And I'm looking forward to seeing him being that guy here in the days to come. Get a chance to watch Otani and Trout. I uh, watched the last at bat. Wasn't that fun? Yeah, that was great. And then I congratulated Riku for his country <laughs> success. Yeah. Just as a baseball fan, though, I mean, how how big special did that moment feel? Well, I thought the World Baseball Classic was fantastic. You know, just the energy to to know that you had Super Bowl ratings in other countries across the world, and the energy of baseball and how that grew the sport. I think is a, a story that needs to be told. And I would hope that American fans, even though it was played on American soil, and I think American fans supported it, uh, the largest influence and, and pride came from other countries in the game. And we're feeling that with Riku and Sabine Ceballos and a couple of the Canadians with their passion and love for the game. It's, it's infectious. It's fantastic. I love having those kids on our team. And to see the World Baseball Classic happen, to see all the people in the world come together and celebrate a great game and their excitement, uh, I think is a story that has been way underdone in the United States. And and uh, even though it's at what some gurus say the wrong time and the wrong time of year and all that kind of stuff, the hell with that. I thought it was awesome. I want more of it. And the passion can grow the game of baseball at, at, at a level that's uh, been unprecedented. So I thought the whole event was awesome. I want to see more of it. And, um, and you know, congratulations to the Japanese. They, they won that thing. That's a hard thing to do. with That, that pitching that they were rolling out there was something else. Pitching. You, guys, you guys have a rotation set, and if so, have you thought about bringing in Mercado since he's done well out of the bullpen last couple games? Yeah, you have to wait and see. I don't know. I'll, I'm going into that <laughs> meeting right now. So, yeah, going into that meeting right now. Yeah. Thanks,